Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to do our 8th 2023-2024 winter look ahead. Now in today's video we've got all the latest November data for the upcoming winter and it's kind of the final time that we're going to be getting longer range charts having a look at the upcoming coming winter. These are all the Copernicus models that we do have, Meteo France, the uh, Met Office, the DWD icon, etc. and more. Uh, of course we've got the culmination uh, at the end of all of them sort of uh, accumulated uh, on top of each other and we can see what the overall sort of consensus is. Now as we've seen through the last couple of months looking at these various charts, we first had a look at August data, September data, October data and now finally November members data we have seen definitely there has been a trend towards blocking as we head into the new year and a westerly based first half of the winter or first month of the winter mostly december now it's going to be very interesting to see if that continues today as we are now a matter of weeks away from reaching december and about six weeks away from getting towards the new year which is when this blocking that a lot of these charts have been suggesting could start to occur now, I've got looked at all the models already, and once again, that pattern does continue. So, the latest runs are not really deviating too much from what we've seen so far. They're reinforcing the idea and the sort of the consensus that we are going to be seeing perhaps strong westerly winds, maybe some application at times, like we're going to be seeing next week with a bit of an Arctic blast. So, application at times potentially, but mostly a westerly based pattern throughout the next sort of four to six weeks. And then as we progress into the new year through January and February, blocking patterns becoming more prevailing. So if we do start on the latest Meteo France run, you can see through December, we've got high pressure out to our west and our south and lower pressure to our north. That is uh, pretty much a flat westerly flag, keeping us unsettled, perhaps some amplification at times, turning us maybe briefly colder. But really, we're looking at a pretty zonal pattern. I said, could be chillier spells, but we're not looking at anything sustained or anything majorly blocked. So again, agreeing with the consensus throughout the autumn so far of quite a west, uh, westerly based first part of the winter. But if we do progress to January, look what happens. Those blues to our north disintegrate away and they transition over the top of us, maybe more to our east. So this, is a, this isn't what I would say is a classic blocking pattern, but it's as I've spoken about in the past few winter look, uh, winter look aheads. We can see from these sort of monthly charts, transitionary months, where the first couple of weeks or the first week could be very westerly based, the last week could be very blocked. And when that comes out in a sort of a, month, a, a monthly outlook, it comes off kind of with no major anomaly. And that's what we're kind of seeing here. So I suspect what the Meteo France is showing here is a transitionary month. So the start of the month, still showing that westerly theme. The second half of the month, or at least the periods of the month, we're showing much more blocking with that low pressure much further eastwards, uh, producing northerly or easterly winds, or at least more gently blocked weather. So again, in agreement with what we've seen so far, February, we see the blocking pattern towards the North, Atl North Atlantic, towards Greenland and Iceland increase. Again, nothing crazy, nothing that would suggest the cold of February we've seen in decades, but definitely suggestion of more blocking, colder spells, at times, and a lot more blues across Europe, and that could indicate a lobe of the tropospheric polar vortex could be heading through Scandinavia towards Central Europe, allowing very cold air to our east for us to tap into if we did start to see those easterly or northerly synoptics take off. Now, finally, for this, we'll have a look at March. There's no point really looking at out April at this stage, but if we look at March, the blocking pattern continues to our north, gets even stronger. And again, look at those blues trailing from the east. This looks like a classic sort of northeasterly, snowy sort of pattern with that major blocking to our north. So you can kind of see the transition through December all the way to March. It's sort of staying very westerly, very zonal, perhaps stormy. And then eventually, as we head towards March, very blocked, cold and snowy on a sort of a, a transition throughout the winter. Again, it's only one model, but it does very much agree with what we've seen throughout the winter or the winter lookheads so far. Now, if you compare to the CMCC, again, through December, you can see low pressure to our north, high pressure to our south, a bit more high pressure towards Greenland through December. So it could suggest maybe some isolated blocking patterns, maybe some more amplification of the jet stream. But again, it's not a classic cold blocked pattern, but definitely would suggest there would be cold spells, 
unlike the uh, last model, we had a look at the Messier France, which you know, probably didn't suggest much at all. You can see, though, as we progress into January, the blocking signal to our north increases substantially. The blues around us disintegrate away. So, again, doesn't give us an overall sort of pattern, but definitely suggests, again, transitioning towards a big blocked pattern, maybe slightly faster than the Meteo France run was showing. Again, definitely suggesting big northern blocking and colder weather. And then if we have a look at February, huge northern blocking to our north. Again, would suggest northerly or easterly winds at times. With this sort of pattern where there were no blues in the northern hemisphere, you would kind of estimate that the blues, um, the lower pressure, would be where sort of the white star went. We're not seeing any major positive anomaly. We'd, so we'd kind of suggest here that there'd be a lower tropospheric polar vortex across Europe and towards northern and western Canada, towards Alaska here. That's where we'd kind of suggest lobes would be falling out to and across parts of eastern Russia as well. So we can't say that for certain, but that's what we kind of estimate from this chart. Again, would suggest northerly or easterly winds. And then finally, March would be a major blocking pattern. Again, huge high pressure, massive high pressure anomaly towards Iceland and Greenland. Again, would suggest very strong easterly or northerly winds. Again, very, very cold with this sort of pattern. Now, if we do compare to the DWD run, and you can see again a generally quite westerly flow. Quite a bit more blocking here again towards Greenland. So similar to CMCC like we just saw, there is suggesting there could be a bit of blocking through December. So not all hope is lost in terms of you know, colder spells through December. Yes, the overall, I guess, consensus would be more of a westerly based pattern. But you can't say it's out of the picture at all seeing a bit of blocking or colder weather. But definitely would suggest more of a stormier, low pressure based westerly month. January, we still see lots of blues towards us, but more to our south. Again, we suggest the jet streams heading southwards and lots of oranges to our north, so a lot more blocking. As we progress in towards February, major blocking to our north and substantial amounts of yellow and oranges. And again, if we looked at just one of these runs in isolation, I wouldn't be you know, too bullish with it. But it's the fact that we've seen this not only from all the runs we've seen so far today, but also from quite a few of the runs over the last couple of months, reinforcing there definitely is something within the longer longer range that is suggesting big blocking through the new year. And then finally into March, again, a major blocking pattern to our north. Now, compared to the ECMWF, uh, again, we had a look at some of these charts last week. Again, strong westerly wind at the moment. Again, a little bit more of a tilt of a northwest to southeast alignment. Again, could be some colder spells at times, but we wouldn't expect anything major. As we head towards the new year, look at that major blocking towards Greenland, northern Canada, up towards Iceland. And again, blues to our east, again, indicating a tropospheric polar vortex lobe could be heading that way into towards february as well major blocking to our north jet stream push southwards again would be cold and potentially snowy and into february the blocking breaks down a little bit more but still to our north just a weaker anomaly and again if we compare to the gma run again we do actually see more atlantic ridging here so again this could suggest a bit more of an amplification of the jet stream you can see the atlantic ridging doesn't get into greenland or iceland at all so it couldn't be properly blocked or sustained but again transient northerly winds like we're likely seeing this upcoming working week we see as I said a bit of an arctic blast as we head in towards january that blocking signal is nowhere near as strong definitely perhaps a weaker blue as blue signal to our north but nowhere near as strong in terms of major blocking that is incredibly interesting to see. So kind of in disagreement to the other runs. Into February, the blocking does arrive, but it is nowhere near as far northwards. And then as we head into March, it eventually gets northwards. The jet stream definitely pushed southwards, but again, nowhere near as much blocking as the other runs. The GMA, a little bit of an outlier today, I must say. We finish by looking at the Met Office run. Again, this is what a lot of the Met Office uh, charts, videos, uh, and blogs will be uh, having a look at in quite a lot of detail. Again, quite a westerly based month, perhaps even more of a southwesterly based here. Less blues towards Greenland again could suggest there could be some transient high pressure ridging, but for all of those blues towards the southern part of the Atlantic, wouldn't uh, wouldn't be surprised if we saw a lot of southwesterly winds. So not only stormy and unsettled, but potentially very mild as well. Into the new year, that pattern kind of disintegrates away. Still, no major blocking to our north, but again, similar. So the first run we had a look at, Meteo France run, could be a more of a transitionary month. Into February, 
blocking arrives, but it's more over the top of us. High pressure sort of plopped over us, and then into March, does head further northwards or westwards. Again, could be cooler spells, but definitely Met Office, uh, like the GMA, less bullish in terms of uh, in terms of major blocking. Definitely showing blocking into the new year, but not in a position that would sort of almost guarantee colder weather. Could suggest colder weather, but no guarantees with that. So you can see all six runs we've had a look at today are in rough agreement. We're going to see a substantial increase in blocking into the new year, maybe just about apart from the JMA, which has been a little bit of an outlier. But you can see the majority of the other runs all suggesting perhaps major blocking into the new year and turning quite a bit colder. Now, after you finish by having a look at the multi-system seasonal forecast, it's got all the runs on Copernicus all kind of added up. Uh, we've got a lot of ensemble members within this. Uh, again, it is going to be you know, not particularly strong anomalies because it has got uh, lots of stuff added up on top of it. But we can get a rough overview of what the majority of runs are suggesting. Now, for December, you can see blues over the top of us. Some more whites towards Greenland, which would suggest that some runs have got some Atlantic ridging. So, again, could be some northerly or northwesterly winds at times, but it, we wouldn't be looking at any major blocking with this if this did come off. This would generally be a westerly based month with quite a lot of unsettled conditions. Into January, that anomaly to our north disappears in terms of blues. Again, indication it could be a trans transitionary month higher pressure ridging northwards, and perhaps colder weather moving in. Lots more blues to our east again, perhaps areas uh, of the tropical polar vortex moving in. And then as we head into February, substantial blocking starts to arrive towards Greenland. Again, the anomaly isn't particularly strong because, as I said, combination of all the runs, we are unlikely to see a massive major positive or negative anomaly, but definitely big blocking for February, and the same as we head into March. So again, the overall outlook from a lot of the runs is definitely suggesting that blocking could be making a big appearance as we head into the new year. Could have some minor appearances through December, but I think the overall pattern from a lot of these runs is for more of a west northwesterly based wind. Could be cool at times, could be very stormy, and there could be transitionary spells of cold weather, maybe even some snow in places that can't be ruled out. As again, these are monthly runs. There could be two, three, four days within it that is cold, and the other 26, 20, uh, 27 through December are very mild. And again, it would come out as a milder month, but there would be you know, a spell of three or four days of cold weather. So that sort of pattern can happen, um, and we'll just have to see that as set nearer the time. But at this stage, looking like a relatively mild, stormy, unsettled December, January could be turning a lot colder or could be more of a transitionary month, and then a lot of the runs do agree February and March could be pretty blocked indeed with plenty of colder spells and generally could be drier as well with more high pressure around. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. Keep you up to date with a lot of the longer range charts. Of course, in the next couple of weeks, we will be having a look at the polar vortex once again as we've got some more data for that. And we'll have a look at some more shorter range charts. Not sort of the GFS or GME, some of the F charts we look at in our sort of daily videos, but sort of weekly charts which have a look at the next four, four to six weeks. Uh, I did suggest that in yesterday's video, uh, but I didn't know the Copernicus data uh, was out and the website was working. Uh, so a couple of days ago I checked and it wasn't working. So um, we're going to have a look at that today, but we'll have a look at that next week um, as that data is going to be out and it's going to continue to be updated. So it'll be interesting to see what a lot of these sort of four to six week models do have in store for December. And of course, we'll stretch out towards the Christmas period now. And again, we'll be interesting to see what sort of pattern it is suggesting. So as I said, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you stay up to date with the videos. And I'll see you again for another video soon.